The day of the week needs no introduction, my dudes. That is right, we are back once again in Velocity Lake, continuing the construction of this theme park. And yes, it's a very exciting episode today, because today we will be constructing a roller coaster. It has been a while. It has been quite some time since I've constructed a roller coaster uh, in this roller coaster park. Um, but worry not, because today we will be addressing this... Uh, lacking this lackingness of roller coasters and what am i talking about who cares so yes we're, i teased it last week uh, i kind of started building the uh, the roller coaster that didn't make it i've been trying to fill this plot of land for quite some time and i finally settled on a bnm invert that i was happy with as i said last episode i highlighted a roller coaster that nearly got built here which was a very intense extreme exciting lots of inversions very thrilling roller coaster but i didn't like it in the end instead i went for this one which is a far more tame uh family oriented bnm invert they're not very common but they do exist there's one in who now i'm really testing my knowledge i think it's shanghai's theme park is it just called shanghai park i i don't know what it's called but i'm pretty sure there's a bnm invert designed for families in Shanghai. This one's a little bit more exciting than that. That This one does have some fairly big drops that go all the way from the top of the lift hill down to the ground. A lot of family coasters don't have drops that substantial, or at least the lift hill isn't quite so high. So it's very, it's really there, it's really here to bridge the gap, much like the Intamin Megalite found on this park's central island. This is like a somewhat good introduction to get sort of youngsters into the idea of going on bigger and better roller coasters. Well, with that being said, I don't know if better is necessarily the best word here because this, and I said this before in previous episodes, this is quickly becoming one of my favourite roller coasters, you know, in the whole park. Not necessarily because it's such an amazing layout or uh, it's, it's very exciting or anything like that, but just how it all came together. You know, the aesthetics, the colour scheme, the general layout, the way it sort of encircles this little plot of land or this this little plaza it kind of dips over the water it just worked it just came out really really well and i was really pleased with how uh, the finished product came out and you know my hope is that uh, you the viewers at home will uh, will share my uh, my my happiness my my um, what's the word i'm looking for my satisfaction for how this roller coaster came out. Uh, this isn't actually the, ult the, the the color scheme we'll be going with in the end. This orange is just the default color uh, that this ride comes in. I'm not a big fan of the orange myself, but don't worry, that will change. One of the things I uh, like doing in, I, I was about to say Planet Coaster, but I did this in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 and Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 and uh, in Parkitect as well. I have played that game. Uh, I always try and have every, <coughs> oh, excuse me. I just choked on nothing. I, I I like to have every roller coaster be a different color, uh, just out of some weird uh, gaming OCD uh, sort of thing. Like uh, I, I just like having a distinctive color for each ride. I'm just now trying to think if that is actually true for this park. I guess there are two yellow coasters to be fair, but one is gold and one is bright yellow. So I, I'm happy to count them as two different colors. Uh, oh, actually. Never mind, because we have two... Oh, no, no, no. I was going to say, is it purple, the RMC? But I think I'd say the RMC is blue. I know the track is definitely blue, but the supports are purple. But I'd say the track colour itself is uh, blue. I'm just pondering the RMC, because the ultimate colour scheme I'll be going for, this ride in particular, will be a nice purple track. Uh, and again, much like the Shanghai uh, family invert, that's a blue colour, like a dark blue colour, which is fairly close in the spectrum to indigo. So uh, that's uh, that's what I have to say about that. And it's a shorter episode. Uh, I did say uh, I, over the past few weeks, we've been building the warehouse district for Velocity Lake. And the episode lengths have been fairly short. Like, I don't think any of them were more than 20 minutes. And if they were, they were very close to the 20 minute mark. Uh, whereas in the past, I've done lots of like, I've done a couple of episodes that have been like 40 minutes long. Uh, but... I don't know. I just, I, I like to think that the 20 minute ones are a little bit more digestible and stuff. So this one is only 15 or so minutes this episode. Um, I think there's going to be a couple of long episodes, but I'm aiming now as 20 minutes is the standard I'm aiming for when making episodes for this theme park. Just because I think the hour long ones, they're just, they're, it's just too much. And to be honest, it's quite difficult for me to sustain that if I'm going to continue uploading these once a week an hour long episode is it's it's not a very sustainable pattern just because the amount of 
uh, work that goes into these episodes is quite substantial. Like one hour, a one hour episode is usually about eight hours worth of footage, I think is what the last big epic episode was. I think when we were doing the roads, I think when I built the roads, there was an episode that was like 50 minutes long and that was about eight hours of footage on the uh, Vegas timeline to give you an idea of how long uh, these episodes take to make, which is fine. I like playing Planet Coaster. I've said many times that if I wasn't making this as a YouTube series, I would still play the game. Uh, but it, when I'm trying to maintain a weekly upload schedule it's just not really feasible for me to play the game enough to gather all of the footage i'd need just not because just because i've got other things to do you know i have a i have a full-time job working in a hospital which as you can imagine uh is quite busy at the moment uh, i've got to obviously dedicate a couple of days of the week to making kerbal videos and then you know i like having a day or two just to do other stuff outside of video games you know i've been kayaking a bit in this nice sunny weather and getting some Getting some social distancing under my belt by kayaking out to sea. Can't get that much more. Can't get much more distant than that. Um, I've been playing a bit of Spyro. Played the Spyro trilogy. Uh, bought that in the Steam sale. I've completed the first game. I'm a bit of a completionist, so I had to hundred. I've hundred percent completed the first game. Going to wait maybe a couple of months before I delve right into the second game. Don't want to get too burned out on Spyro. Um, I never really. I played it a little bit. When I was younger, like on the PlayStation 1, uh, I never had a PlayStation 1 myself. I had, a, I had a Sega Mega Drive and then I had a GameCube. I kind of skipped the PS1 generation. Uh, but I had a, I played it at my friend's house. I believe it was Spyro 3, I think was the one I played. It was the one with the skate park. I remember the skate park and I remember a small penguin being there. And that's pretty much my memory of Spyro. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure it was Spyro 3. So, you know, nice to relive the, relive the classics, as it were. Um... Don't know. What do you? What have you guys bought in the Steam sale? Is the Steam sale even? I, I was up. Oh my goodness! That brings me to another sort of topic I could have touched on today. Is I was like, usually when I do these commentaries, when I'm talking about quote unquote current events, I'm like, okay, right. I'm talking about this current event, but will it still be relevant? And will everyone even remember this was even a thing uh, when this video goes up? Because usually I record these videos weeks in advance because I. That's just how I schedule my life. <laughs> Uh, like, I don't really have time to make Planet Coaster videos every week, so I, gen I generally make a bunch all at once when I've got a bit of a spare afternoon, and then I'm just set for a few weeks. I'm going to think about it too much. Uh, but this week, I realized that I'd run out of Planet Coaster videos, and I didn't have anything to upload today, uh, July the 15th, 2020. So I'm actually recording this the day it's uploaded, possibly. I don't know. Maybe. I, I, if, I, if I get this done in time and... I watch it and it's not just a complete mess, then I'll be uploading it today. So when I say it is Wednesday, my dudes, it is not only an actual Wednesday, my dudes, but also the day of the the, the same day that you're watching it. So it's like, it's like, it's like we're, 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 we're together for once. I don't know what I'm trying to say on this, but I've kind of exhausted everything I need to talk about with this coaster, really. Uh, I'm going to do some custom supports, as you can see me doing, that's what I'm placing here, just because... The supports for the little helix that goes over the water are all on the outside of the helix, if that makes sense. Like the helix is a circle shape and they're all on the periphery of the circle. I want them on the inside of the circle just because then, you know, there's better uh, pathway interaction with the ride because people on the paths near the track can see the cars more easily, completely unobstructed by any ugly structures, making great photo opportunities for any family and friends that aren't on the ride and want to capture a memorable photograph of their loved ones on the ride um, as an example <laughs> uh, but also it just looks better i think from an aesthetic point of view uh i talk about nemesis a lot on this channel on this on this series and uh, uh nemesis is a bnm invert alton towers and so i guess it's lends itself well to be uh talked about in this episode i kind of i kind of keep watching the screen looking for things to talk about and losing my train of thought but no nemesis uh, if you've ever been to alton towers and have been to nemesis you probably know what i'm talking about there's like this pathway obviously there's a path but there's a, the path goes right up to this fence and on the other side of the fence is a helix for nemesis right at ground level and one of my first memories of nemesis when i went there was standing at that fence and the car whooshed around the helix really really fast and the wind it generated could always knock you back it was incredible and i kind of wanted to capture that with this ride obviously this is not going anywhere near the same momentum that nemesis traveled at but it was the same sort of effect just seeing the rush of the car zoom past and the people's feet get right up to the fence it was a really really cool um like viewpoint i guess of the ride and i wanted to kind of capture that with this right here. So that was another reason why I wanted to get the uh, 
uh, track supports on the inside of the helix just to make the uh, the view of the cars as unobstructed as possible and to obviously you know again again the support would kind of obstruct the airflow somewhat and kind of dampen that rush of the wind as the car flies by i don't know kind of what the the wind effect would be like of this roller coaster because i, I don't really know uh, obviously it's just, it's not real and i don't know physics well enough to be able to calculate the kind of wind displacement air displacement whatever the correct term would be uh so i can only imagine but i don't think it's going to be as strong as nemesis but nonetheless it's still a good spot i feel like uh, I didn't. Re I don't really know what I've been talking about this past like ten minutes. I don't know if any of that made sense, but I hope it did because it was. It meant a lot to me to capture that particular element just there. But there we are. Look at that. Uh, we are going to still need to do a few more custom supports just because a lot of this ride goes over the little plaza I built earlier on in this episode, and of course, uh, roller coaster supports don't spawn if the track is over pathways and there's no like there's not enough free land either side of the pathway for a track support to spawn. So we're going to have to go ahead and build our own, which is fine. They're pretty easy to do, and uh, you know I think custom supports generally always look a little bit better than. Uh, the generated ones just because you can make them bespoke and custom tailored to fit exactly what your ride needs to be obviously we haven't got all of the parts that the spawnable ones have uh, for this ride type i guess we do but for other rides it's very hard to make custom supports that look like the ones that spawn but you can get pretty close and for this ride it's not a big problem and i've got those those two little custom towers there which is the really really thick towers that kind of have lots of arms supporting one section of track which i think it's been a while now since I built this ride, but I'm pretty sure that's what the B&M family, B family invert in Shanghai has, uh, was those, like, one big tower support that s supports, like, a, a whole helix, if that makes sense. I don't even know if it does. I might have just made this up, but it's a bit of a Mandela effect going on. And to be honest, I'm still not 100% confident that this ride even is in Shanghai. Like, I don't want to say this ride, because this ride doesn't look anything like the B&M family, family inverts that exist. I really should slow down when talking. Uh, but, uh, I'm not even sure if there is an existing family, B&M family invert <laughs> in Shanghai. Uh, is there even a theme park in Shanghai? I'm pretty sure there is. Uh, gosh, it's, uh, I'm very, I'm very, I don't really know what I'm talking about. Um, what is it to talk about on screen? <laughs> moving, moving on, my goodness. Uh, here we are placing some concrete because this part of the ride goes underneath, goes below ground level, basically. And I don't really want just bare, like, a, like a, just a ditch, because that looks a bit unrealistic, and also might not be that safe if it rains and the land is not stable. So I thought best to just encase this little dip in a nice concrete channel, which is obviously the more realistic approach. Any roller coaster in real life that dives below ground level will pretty much adopt a system like this. For example... I don't know, pick any, uh, Fury 325 dives below ground level at one point and it goes into a concrete channel, uh, Oblivion, mo a lot of dive coasters in fact do go into concrete channels, the list goes on and it's not really a list that needs uh, going through to make this commentary any better so I'm not going to but that's what I'm doing here, just putting this little concrete channel, we're going to just try and bring the terrain right up to the pr edge wall of that concrete channel, obviously you can't get it perfect, the ground will always uh, be slightly above the concrete that's just a quirk of how planet coasters terraining works but i think it still looks pretty realistic regardless i've left that little cut out there just there on the left hand side that's going to be the access point if for whatever reason the train valleys in that dip i i it probably wouldn't but just in case on the off chance it does uh guests can be rescued i'm gonna put a little ladder uh, an access point inside that little cutout. for those that don't know what a valley is it's when a train goes down a hill and then a roller coaster train, I guess, if we're going to be specific, although I would assumed the context of this video would make that clear. But regardless, a roller coaster train goes down a hill, and then at the base of the hill, it then starts ascending up the next hill, but it doesn't make it. And it rolls back down, and it valleys in the dip between the two hills, hence why it's called valley. It's slightly different to what can happen on launched roller coasters, which is a rollback. And when I say launched coaster, I mean. I don't know, something like uh, Fury 3, to, Fury 3 to 5, uh, Top Thrill Dragster, King Dakar, Stealth, that sort of thing. The ones where there's a big launch and then the car goes straight up a big vertical hill, followed by a top hat and then straight down again. Those kinds of launch coasters where the train basically barely gets enough speed to crest the hill. So the actual cresting can be nice and slow. So the guests get a wonderful panoramic view from the top before it plummets down again. Uh, and a lot of the time, 
if you know there's slightly heavier riders or the, uh, the the weather's not great and the track isn't quite as, you know, there's a bit more friction on the track, sometimes the car doesn't make it up the initial hill and uh, it rolls back. And that's different from valleying, but it is nonetheless similar. And there it is. We've now completed the layout of this roller coaster. So I'm going to end this video with a POV of what we've done so far so you can get a sense of uh, the progress that we've made. There's still obviously a lot of work to be done. The station and queue line are not there yet. So that's going to be done over the next episode or so. Um, but we've finished the basic layout of this ride. And I hope you like it. Like I say, it was fairly short. Not a lot to it. But I, nonetheless, I don't know. I really liked how it came out. And I hope you guys enjoy the following episodes where we continue to work on, imp on adding to this coaster and making it making it something special. But I'm going to end the episode there, guys. Uh, there's going to be a thing on screen with some links in a second, any moment now. There it is. <laughs> on the left-hand side is a link to the full Velocity Lake playlist. On the right-hand side is a video chosen for you based on your viewing habits. There's a link to subscribe and check out Patreon. In the description, you'll find links to Discord, Instagram, merchandise, Twitter, all that good stuff. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday.